Hello and welcome once again to chi square test. Now today we'll take a question wherein certain kind of probability is being used. Although probability is a separate concept, but yes, elementary probability can be used in chi square. I mean you can get some questions in which elementary probability is being used which are actually targeted at finding chi-square value. So let us import a question and then we'll see how we go about it. Now here is our question. It says a die is thrown 132 times with following results. So what are the possible outcomes when you throw a die? You could get a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. When you roll a die, you could get these values. Isn't that the case? So you expect to get expected outcome. You expect to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6 as it has been mentioned in the question also. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. Now what will be the probability of getting 1? Now that is very easy question. What is the probability of getting a 1 when you roll a die? It is 1 by 6. What is the probability of getting a 2 when you roll a die? It is 1 by 6 because 6 possible outcomes and I am talking of only one outcome at a time. So 1 by 6. So probability of getting any of these outcomes is 1 by 6. And if probabilities are 1 by 6, so what do we mean by probability of 1 by 6? When I say the probability is 1 by 6, I mean that if I roll a die once, I have a 1 by 6 chance of getting 1, 2, 3 or anything. But I have rolled the dice 132 times. So what is the expected? Now I have expected over here. What is expected? Uh, we'll use some other ink. Expected return is probability of a return multiplied by number of trials. So Ex is equal to Px multiplied by n. This is our Px. n is equal to 132 as it is given over here. The die has been rolled 132 times. So what will be my expected frequencies? I expect that out of 132 times, 1 by 6 times. Out of these 132 times, 1 by 6 times I should get a head, which makes it how much? Exactly, it should be 22 times. So 22 times I expect to get 1. Similarly, I expect to get 22 times 2, because again this will be 132 px this px multiplied by n, this px multiplied by n, this px, each time I will be getting a 22 only. So these are my expected frequencies. Now, already we can see that we were given the frequencies that were observed, following results were obtained. So this frequency was the observed frequency. Here I have my expected frequency. So can I go ahead and write these observed frequencies also over here? Definitely we can do so. What are our observed frequencies? Observed. Observed frequencies are 16, 20, 25, 14, 29 and 28. So now what is the formula for chi-square? Chi-square formula is O minus E whole square upon E and ultimately a summation of all such values. O minus E whole square. So can I find out O minus E whole square? First I will find out O minus E. Then I will find out O minus E whole square. And finally I will find out O minus E 
whole square upon e fine so it looks like we can do this o minus e 16 minus 22 minus 6 o minus e 20 minus 22 minus 2 25 minus 22 3 14 minus 60 oh sorry 14 minus 22 minus 8 29 minus 22 7 28 minus 22 6 so here are values of o minus e now i need squares of these values so what will be the squares 36 square of 2 is 4 9 64 49 and 36 so this becomes o minus e whole square now lastly we need to divide it by e so if we divide o minus e square by e we get 36 by 22 this case o minus e square divided by e it will be 4 by 22 this will be 9 by 22 what am i doing I'm dividing O minus E square by E. 64 by 22. Lastly, we have 49 by 22. Okay. We still have 36 by 22. And I very well know that summation of all these, summation of all such values is chi square. So can I go ahead and find chi square? It will be summation of all these. How do I take summation? Now, if you can see here, all these are fractions but all are having a denominator of 22 so i can simply add all these values it will become 36 plus 4 plus 9 plus 64 plus 49 plus 36 all upon 22 because i have taken lcm as 22 everybody was having same denominator so i can take lcm as 22 and when you add them all you get 198 divided by 22 so lcm 22 we added all these values we get 9 so chi square practical is 9 remember the values that we calculate we call them either chi square practical or you can also call it chi square observed that is 9. Okay. This you may not be needing. We will do with chi square practical is 9. Now, I have my value of chi square practical. Now, what do we need? We need chi square theoretical. Chi square theoretical. From where do we get that theoretical value? We need to check chi square table. So, now let us import the chi-square table and see what is the theoretical value of chi-square for our given case. So here is our chi-square table. Now we need to go in and check value of chi-square theoretical. Chi-square theoretical. Now how do I check chi-square theoretical? First things first, here is the level of significance. We generally assume we are checking all values at 5% level of significance if it is not given in the question. As you can check, there was no mention of level of significance in question. So, we will take 5% level of significance. Now, at 5%, if we look here, we are given degrees of freedom. What are degrees of freedom? Degrees of freedom are n minus 1. So, in our case, what will be the value of n it will be 6 i had 6 cases case 1 case 2 case 3 case 4 case 5 and case 6 so i had 6 cases so my degrees of freedom will be 6 minus 1 that is 5 chi square theoretical at degrees of freedom 5 and alpha is equal to 0 0.05 5 percent so at 5 
का स्क्वायर वैल्यू शुड है बीन डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम आर फाइव बिकॉज डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम इज इक्वल टू एन माइनस वन विच इज सिक्स माइनस वन विच इज फाइव सो एट फाइव एंड फाइव परसेंट लेवल ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस आई एम चेकिंग लेवन पॉइंट जीरो सेवन जीरो रिमेंबर वी जनरली ऑलवेज टेक लेवल ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस एज फाइव परसेंट In this case, it happens to be that degrees of freedom are also five, and I'm taking five percent. So don't get confused with this five and this five. This five is degrees of freedom. If we had ten events, I would have taken nine degrees of freedom, and still have been checking the values at five percent. So in this case, it is five percent, five percent. It will be eleven point zero seven zero. Now, can we tell what is our conclusion? My conclusion would be. that as chi square practical is less than chi square theoretical therefore null hypothesis is accepted and what would my null hypothesis be that is there is no significant difference in observed and expected frequencies so this is my interpretation or analysis of this given question in chi square difference in observed and expected frequencies Fine. So this was another kind of situation where probability is being used in question to confuse us. But anyways, this was a simple case of probability, so we could handle it. And our null hypo, our interpretation is that null hypothesis is accepted. Why are we accepting? Once again, by now you should be clear why we are accepting. We are accepting because. practical value is less than theoretical value practical should always be less than theoretical value if that is the case we outrightly accept the null hypothesis thanks for watching bye bye